Thank lift you. of her address. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Judith Collins. Uh, Mr. Speaker, good morning uh, to you in the House. Uh, this bill also strengthens the ability of police and courts to deal with young defendants on bail. The current law includes a strong presumption in favour of bail for defendants aged 17 to 19 years. The original bill removed this presumption for those who had previously been imprisoned, as the data showed that this group had a high rate of offending on bail. The Law and Order Committee questioned the justification for the presumption for bail for 18 and 19 year olds. And this provision seemed to be, have rather obscure historical origins and the committee recommended that it be removed. The government has agreed to this change, although the original provision for 17 year olds remains. This recognises the need, wherever possible, to avoid the incarceration of those under 18 in keeping with New Zealand's international commitments. The bill includes a statutory regime for electronically monitored or EM bail. This has been a useful aspect of our bail system for several years, but until now EM bail has been granted by the courts under their generic power to impose bail conditions. The Government believes that the time has come to make specific provision for EM bail in the legislation to ensure that it is applied consistently and effectively. The original bill provided for EM bail to be administered by police as it is at present. At the Committee of the Whole House stage, I tabled an, a supplementary order paper to allow the Department of Corrections as well as New Zealand Police to administer EM bail. Corrections already administers a number of other programmes involving the electronic monitoring of offenders in their homes, such as home detention and parole conditions, involving residential restrictions. It makes sense to take advantage of this expertise by allowing correction staff to assess defendants in their homes for their suitability for EM bail. Police, however, will retain primary responsibility for the oversight of defendants on bail. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, our member Richard Prosser has tabled two supplementary order papers to bring in what would have become known as Christie's Law. Uh, this started from a petition uh, put together by Mrs Tracy Marceau, signed by about 58,000 people, who have, um, and that petition is currently with the Law and Order Committee. Can I just thank uh, the member, Richard Prosser, for providing me with copies of the supplementary order papers prior to the committee stages so that I was able to consider them. That's a matter that we would look forward to considering um, after the petition, Christie's Law petition, has been dealt with by the committee and sent back to the House. Um, I've also taken note of comments made by some members in the debates regarding the slowness of matters passing through the criminal justice system. I could not agree more. It's absolutely ridiculous that we wait. Uh, people are on bail for 18 months, uh, that we wait in some cases years for these matters, serious matters, to come through the court system. I can say that there is some hope already, and that is uh, around the implementation of the Criminal Procedure Amendment Bill, the CPI um, Act, which is now in place. But also I look forward to support of other parties to the Judicature Modernisation Bill that I intend bringing to this House in the very near future to speed up the system and to help have justice not only be seen to be done but to be seen to be done in a prompt and efficient manner. Uh, Mr Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Speaker. Honourable Phil Goff. Mr Speaker, Labor is supporting this bill.